Physics simulations are everywhere. However, it is not obvious how these simulations are made. Will a ball roll over or run into a slope? How will it react to something falling on top of it? This is an equation which governs the motion of objects in the real world. The first two terms take in the vectors of initial position, initial velocity, acceleration, and jerk, which is change in acceleration. The equation calculates the current position as a function of the time t. However, the equation is an infinite series, so we will need to approximate it to, in order to run it on a computer. Also, so we can handle physical interactions later, we would like an equation for the current position given the last few positions, not given the total time elapsed. It turns out that this approximation is close enough for most practical use. It is known as the Verlet integration equation. Here, x of t plus delta t represents the object's next position, x of t represents the object's current position, x of t minus delta t represents the object's previous position, a of t represents the object's current acceleration, and delta t represents the time between position updates. Now we know how to update an object's position, but it hasn't yet been set in motion. Different simulations have different rules, but in many cases, downward gravity applies. Every frame, if we set an object's acceleration to a constant downward vector, it will fall with increasing velocity like it would on Earth. Another thing that changes the motion of objects in this simulation is constraint. For example, we can simulate a pendulum by constraining a ball to a fixed distance away from a fixed point as it tries to fall. If the ball's position is greater than the fixed length away from the pivot, we move it closer. If it's less, we move it farther away. A simulation may have many, many different constraints. For example, we may add another constraint stating that the ball should not go through a wall. Every frame, we loop over all constraints that apply to the simulation. However, when we move on to constraints that are later on our list, it may disrupt earlier ones, such as by making the pendulum too short. To fix this, we can apply the constraints and Verlet integration equation multiple times per frame in order to approach a satisfactory state. I encourage you to explore the endless possibilities of Verlet integration.